hey, it's Tuesday night. No, it's not. It's whatever. I've changed the days. It should be Wednesday, unless I couldn't upload the episode. Whatever. Uh, uh, Will Morfori on Total Schmidt Show today. Let's do this. <laughs> Hey, it's Tuesday night, Total Schmidt Show. I'm uh, I'm in Alaska. Check it out. Look, beautiful Alaska. Uh, I'm in Alaska this week on the Norwegian Bliss, one of my favorite runs to do. My favorite ship and by far uh, my favorite ports. Alaska is absolutely stunning, beautiful. Do me a favor if you can, like the video, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. If you look above me, around me, and all around me, you can find social media information for me and the channel, the platform. Uh, there's going to be some changes coming up with uh, the Lenny Schmidt Comedy Network and my website uh, this uh, month. Uh, I won't have a, will not have a Patreon anymore, uh, and we'll do everything through my website. You'll get all that information if you're a follower pretty quick. The rest of you will be getting pounded with it aimlessly over the next few weeks. Today's episode is Will Marfori, a very good friend of mine, hilarious comic, uh, great writer, really good performer entertainer. I've known him for years. I haven't worked with him in a long, long, long time. He's one of those guys, very clever, clever, clever writer. One of those dudes I like working with, he's a great dad, which I, I'm always, I like guys like that. He's a great dad, and I have a lot of respect for guys that are great fathers, great parents, great mothers. Uh, this is a hard life to travel and make a living and, and, and be a parent, uh, and especially when the kids are little. Will's kids are teens, uh, and I went through what he's going through. And it's uh, difficult to go out here and work. I say that as I'm surrounded by beautiful mountains. I know, I get it. But you're away from your family a lot. You're traveling a whole bunch. You know, you're doing 40 weeks a year on the road, but you're still trying to be a parent. And it's hard to do and balance. And some guys, honestly, some people I know don't care and don't try and are terrible parents. But uh, many of them are amazing parents. And I'm always amazed by those guys. And Will Marfori is one of those guys. A brilliant comic, great writer, great parent, good friend. Sit back and enjoy my conversation with the one and only Will Marfori. It is an honor to be here. Thank you uh, for having me. I feel kind of out of place. I do not sound like I've been hanging out in a dry bar. <laughs> <laughs> but I sound like this all the time. I was born with cerebral palsy. A lot of people don't know what that means. It means I really suck at building model airplanes. <laughs> I'm terrible, my friends look at the models I build, they're like, whoa, what kind of airplane is that? <laughs> that one shot down. <laughs> but the glue smells great. <laughs> it's not all bad, there's some good things about having a disability. Uh, your friends ever ask you to help them move. I feel uh, like I'm at a bodega in New York City about to buy something. Do you really? <laughs> you're like you're barricaded. What do you mean? <laughs> That's 375. <laughs> <laughs> you just put the money in the slot. Money in the slot. <laughs> and you only gave me four wings. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> four wings. <laughs> Where's my wings? Read the. It's uh, after six o'clock. You get six. Um, I tell him, dude, just, we just talk, I, we do whatever. You ever seen that YouTube guy? He's a, he owns a bodega in like the Bronx or something in New York City and guys come and buy lighters and he gives them pink lighters and when they get pink lighters, they think that means he thinks they're gay. No way. So they lose their shit. It's, Seriously? It's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it's one of the funniest things. You realize how simple it is. To get someone to be violent. Yeah. <laughs> All you have to do is give them a pink lighter. Dude, I would order cases of pink lighters and just give those out the whole time. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I would sell to constantly. Well, if you don't want to get your lighter uh, stolen, you should have a pink one. Yeah, I guess one. that's the no, deal. I don't know. But why would I, I lie? I'm, why are you so fucking upset over the color of a lighter? That's a correct me up. Man, <laughs> some people are not secure in their masculinity <laughs> like you and I. <laughs> You know, yeah, we, we can have pink lighters. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Well, dude, it was good to work with you this week, man. I'm sorry it's going to be short. I know. But, it's tough. But you were funny last night, bro. Thank you. Said, yeah, I can't wait for the theater tonight. It's going to be a good time. They were, they're cool on here. I like I like this crowd. You know, they actually laugh. Yeah, they were good, man. It's, it, I, it's sometimes about a five-day is good. Um, oh, I, 
him in the lounge tonight. I'm glad you told me that. I never know. Oh. <laughs> or in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks when you don't show up. Yeah, when they're looking for you, that can't be a good thing either. Yeah. Um, dude, I can't remember the last time we worked together. It was. I have no idea. And it might have been pre-COVID. It was definitely that. Yeah. 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 Was, no, I don't remember. <laughs> but that was probably because I was drunk. Yeah, well. You know? Well, did I remember doing the? <laughs> we used to, for some reason, do those crossings a lot. The ones going to Hawaii. Yeah. And I remember those yep. when you would just try to sleep for four days. That yep. was like your goal was to just if I could, if I could just sleep for two. Because back then you did two. If you did the first two days, yeah. The last three days were brutal because yeah. you were just sitting around doing nothing for the. Well, when you get out there, there's no TV or anything. So yeah, right. There's literally. just fuzz or that picture of the yeah. satellite that yeah. says sorry. You know. <laughs> You no start wifi. asking if they need any chores done around the ship. Yeah. You're like, hey, man, can I help out? <laughs> you guys need a guy to fucking to sweep up a little bit in the coffee shop? Do you ever do it when they they ask you to do an extra, like, talk or something? Uh, or no. a seminar? No, but I remember when they asked people if they were willing to do balloon things during the day and kid yeah. shows and clown stuff. Yeah. Right, which I was not. I'm like, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not doing blue animals. I did one that was like how to be a comedian. That's a cool. That would be cool. It was a lot of fun. A lot of people came. So. A lot of uh, some of the other cruise lines that I work, they do. They have it. There's that's their structure. They don't have. First of all, they don't. They don't have a club uh, structure. Uh, you know where you can do where you do club shows and stuff. Hang on. Power cord. Come on, bro. Um, they don't have a club structure really at all. But what they do have is uh, they'll do the theater and then they'll do during the day in another room uh, a, just any like a, a seminar, same thing. Yeah. Like a word. God, one of the best ones I saw was this, this guy Leo Russo. Do you ever, have you ever heard of him? Leo Russo. No. He was a uh, dude. It was the coolest story ever. He's mm -hmm. this dude that toured. He did tours. He was the he ended up being the tour manager for free, for Fleetwood Mac. Okay. And he was a tour manager for the beat uh, beat uh, the. Uh, Beach Boys on their oh. 50th reunion tour Damn. and he became really good really good friends with Brian Wilson and stuff okay so he's got three different talks one is one is about the Beatle, Beach Boys one is about Fleetwood Mac which is mesmerizing because he worked with them during rumors okay. and he's got footage from the sound from the room and stuff you've never heard and back because you know the story of the album is they fought through that whole album you know the whole yeah, album is about were. each other right yeah. and it, every album is a breakup song about one of the other I mean it's just and it's a yeah. powerful album but it's got them fighting in the studio. But anyway, he started out as I remember. I don't know if you remember this because I think I'm, I'm older than you. I don't know if they, well, if you went to a concert back in the '70s, you knew the concert was going to start when you saw guys crawling up the catwalk to go work the lights. They didn't have computers and shit back wow. then. Wow. There was you would see five guys literally yeah. crawl up. Some guys would be up there for a while, but for the most part, they'd all go up around the same time. And that's when you knew it's a crowd. Like, oh, well, we yeah. got ten minutes, yeah. you know. Right. And he was one of those guys. He started out being a light guy wow. in Long Beach, and then he ended up touring and doing. He had all these stories about touring, and he's like, "Geez, in his early twenties, he's a lights sure. guy." It's like, almost like an almost famous thing. Yeah, it was really phenomenal. I bet he got a lot of blowjobs. Dude, he got dude, his stories. His, dude, his stories on stage are great. The ones off stage are even better. Oh, yeah. oh those are. You sit down and have yeah. dinner with that guy for a few hours. Yeah. They're the best. That's the difference between rock and roll and comedy. I don't think anyone's uh, <laughs> trying to get backstage to a comedy show. Well, not any. Well, no. Kennison was the only guy that yeah. kind of broke that model. But everyone else yeah. is. No, there's, not, there's no groupy thing really going on. Maybe like, Dice, too. There's big arena guys. There's not a lot of big arena guys. Yeah. Well, Matt Reif now, maybe. You think. Yeah, maybe. I think a lot of people go to the green room of of a comedy show to sober up. Oh, really? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go in there and they're like, everyone's just on their phone. <laughs> right. Right. Plus, there's so many comics yeah. now that are dry. Like, sure. guys that are our age, there's a ton of guys that don't drink at all. Yeah. You know, nobody boozes it up. They get funnier though when they sober up. For if they're around as that long, so. yeah. Well, a lot of guys do. Yeah. Like, well, I used to perform. I used to get drunk on stage every night. I used to drink a lot to go on stage. But yeah, I'm, me too. Once I started doing ships, because yeah. it was in the contract uh, originally that yeah. you weren't supposed to drink before you went on, and I was like, oh, that's gonna suck. But after doing it for a while, I I love it. Yeah. I, I prefer. I prefer. I save my drinking for after. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, well, what made me is now we do so many different shows that I have to remember what jokes I already told. Right. So. And you got to remember what yeah. joke not to do because it'll step on a bit that you need for that show. And then yeah. you're like, oh, God, now I burned this. I need that for the theater tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I, I don't like doing com. I used to do it quite a bit too, but I don't like doing comedy drunk anymore. Right. Just, I'm not as good. No, no. You know what? Also, I get to a point. I can. I've listened to tapes of me when yeah. I was and seen stuff. Yeah. And it's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. Some of the older stuff, I'm like, Man, what was I thinking? <laughs> Right. Even just like a half an audio, I'll be listening. Going, God, listen to me slur my way through right. this. Just yep. uh, barely b- being able to put together <laughs> crowd work is void. <laughs> Fuck you! You just you know, there's no cleverness to it. You guys suck. You can say, no, <laughs> no, you guys <got> suck. <laughs> that joke's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really embarrassing. There's some. I'm glad. I'm glad that most of my stuff that was put down back then is all old video stuff that won't be reproduced or yeah. seen. You know. Like, nowadays, you put anything on, it's going to be online forever. True. My shit never made it online before yeah. the age of, say, 40-ish. Yeah, I'm glad it was like that, because there would yeah. be a lot of terrible comedy out there for me. Oh, there'd be a lot. But it doesn't matter anymore. People are like, the, as long as they get views, they don't care. Yeah. You know, I've seen I've seen clips that have, like, 100,000 views that are terrible but they're like oh rocking it and blah 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 well we were talking about this a little bit the other day I'm amazed that that's okay you know like when, yeah. we, when we started out it was important to be a good comic you know like you, sure. you wanted to be able to have a, a, a bit like a good bit was something like yeah fuck yeah I finished this bit yeah. you gotta come see my AI bit if it's finally I think it's perfect or it's done yeah. or whatever you know you work on this shit forever yeah you want it you, well it's the difference between like um, live streaming versus trying to create an album like if you create an album you a record you want it to be perfect before right. anyone sees it right right but modern comedy is all about just producing content content right just throw stuff out there yeah and then something else stick right you know yeah, and then you get a lot. Then you get a lot of viewers, a lot of clicks, a lot of likes, yeah. and that's all that really matters. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like the old day. You're right. When somebody had, remember when a special was a special? Yeah. yeah. Like I pulled back from calling. I have a special that came out on YouTube two months ago. I worked yeah. through Aaron Pong Gorilla. Yeah. I fought saying special on those for a long time. Yeah. You know, but then everyone else is. I'm like, all right, it's, yeah. it's, I got it. It's a special. I called a special. Yeah. But back when it used to the old HBO ones, the original, early on yeah. when there was only like four a year. Yeah. Com- all completely. Yes, you know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, all my comedy's special. <laughs> 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 it is a dumb word, though. Yeah. I, I, you know, like, I don't know. Ta da. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, and it's, you have to get over that, though. Like, uh, like, you know, young people are fine with putting up a thousand TikToks a day. Yeah. Like, they'll just stream of consci- consciousness onto the internet. And for us, it's like, I really want it to be meaningful. Yeah, I want it to mean something. And I it imagine, like, oh, people will see this and it'll change their day or their mood or their life. But in reality, it's just people doing this all day long and just right. going through stuff. And, I know. shot a long, I shot a long, I shot a video of me it was I go I'll do travel day you ever see those where I'm gonna do yeah. travel day so I packed the bags and go and I got delayed and I got a bunch of cool footage it's like I thought it was yeah. funny I had it in my head so I'm like I got a, I got a flight and then delayed and then it's got me in the bar and then it's a shot of again I go back delayed and me in the bar again and then it's me again and then it's me with the shot and but it's I got all this footage and I haven't finished it it's still sitting on my hard drive yeah. I'm like it's so right. much work and I'm like I want it to look perfect right. the one I did that was quick and funny I did with an app was when I was in Cozumel it was like a day in Cozumel mm-hmm. and it was just kind of that thing where I walked in went to Th- uh, Thirsty Cougar mm-hmm. and the whole point of the joke is I walk in and through Cozumel and I'm going no, I'm good. No, I'm you know, you're always hitting you up for stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. And then yeah. it goes to Thirsty Cougar, and it shows a shot of a beer, margarita, shots of tequila, all this stuff. And it's me going back to the ship going, yes, yeah, woohoo, yeah, yeah. And it's just all these running jokes. Yeah. And it was it was funny. It was maybe two minutes long. Yeah. But that's the only one I did that I put out there, and uh, I, I like that I did it one shot. Right. You know what I mean? Everything else I shoot, and then I edit it, and I look, ah, I, I want this. This scene goes here, and this scene goes here. <laughs> I think we're overthinking it. We're way overthinking it. You know, like you'll see guys that put crowd work clips on on mine, and it's just them doing basic stuff like just oh you're a whore, you're yeah. fat, blah blah blah. And, yeah, yeah. And that's what people like, and it's like, well, 
That's not what I think comedy is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny. But... Well, that's a good example of the stuff that, like, I got a whole thread of stuff on my YouTube channel called Jokes on the Water, and I tape the shows. Yeah. But the only thing I put up is the crowd stuff. Yeah. Because I don't want to burn the material. I don't want yeah. all my material online either, you know? Yeah. But all the clips are like a minute short, and I fought that for a long time. Yeah. When my brother and I were talking about it, and my brother does the same stuff, and he had a good point. He's like, uh, uh, I, I, you can't fight. It's almost like you're fighting. You're, it's almost like you're fighting for radio to stay. When sure. radio, when TV came in, at some yeah. point I'm like, I, I don't want to put this crowd work stuff up. But then everybody's doing it, yeah. and you're like, well, fuck, I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta put the crowd work stuff up. And yeah. it's almost like you got. If you're gonna do content, that's the stuff they watch. You gotta do. You everything. gotta adapt. Like that's why I'm working on my sex tape. So. I can... <laughs> Bring people to my website. Look, man, when you do the sex tape, don't put a lot of thought into it. Just, uh, fuck, just do it and get it up. Well, I never, you know what? You should stream it live. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm calling that Shannon Sharp's agent to give me. <laughs> give me. I still haven't seen any of that shit. That's hilarious. To me. <laughs> what? How is that? How you like? He's a Hall of Fame. I know. That's really good. think about that. That's depressing. Yes. Super Bowls, he's had millions of dollars. Yeah. Why do, isn't that enough? Yeah. Isn't it just enough to be that? You have to be Kim Kardashian. I don't. Or you have to be Paris Hilton. Maybe it's just me. I don't understand why there's a lot of these, uh, not just athletes, but celebrities, old actors, all these people that you find them out there still doing stuff like this, social, get, staying, trying to stay in <laughs> yeah. relevant. Yeah. And I'm like, I watch them going, man, if I. If I had half your money, I would be out. Yeah. You know, I would be, I don't want to, I like doing this, I love it, but I, my whole goal coming in, I've always told my friends was, I need five good years, like five strong, solid, like yeah. Hollywood type years. I still haven't hit them at fucking 60, but if I hit them, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, just take the money and go yeah. and ride off to the sunset. Yeah, and relax. You don't need, what do you need? You don't yeah. need to be popular. You know? I I think I'd be like a guy like J.D. Salinger, the guy who wrote Catcher in the Rye. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't want to talk to anybody. Right. He was a recluse. He was like, this is my book. That's what I think about the world. Right. I don't want I'm to out. take pictures. I don't want to sign autographs. That's great. I don't want anything, anything. I would do that. If I could get to the point where I didn't have to be on social media and didn't yeah. have to do all that stuff, I would do it in a heartbeat. I would be yeah. off the grid. I would be all of that stuff. Yeah. I, Gene Hackman's a great example of that. He's another guy. He was like... He, to him, acting, I loved his work, but he, he's a big, his acting, acting was a job. It's yeah. how he made money. And he never bought into the Hollywood hype and all that stuff. And even now, he lives in somewhere in Nebraska or something, and he just, he's totally off the grid. You know, he's yeah. still around. He just did a one voiceover thing in the last five or six years for something. Yeah. But he was like, I'm done. I'm good. I don't have to work anymore. You don't see him popping around these, where are they now shows? You know what I mean? He's, <laughs> right. You know. He doesn't have a reality TV show. I guess the only person I think that did that on a kind of a cool level for me was Letterman. Because he had Letterman, you know, when he had Letterman, when he went up to Utah or Montana right. and right. he could have disappeared. Yeah. But then he did his kind of his own thing on his own terms and it seemed pretty cool. You know yeah. what I mean? So that seemed kind of cool. You know, he, he was a writer, a comedy writer. J.J. Walker, his writers were Letterman and Leno. Oh, really? They were his writers. Yeah. I remember Leno being it's on the crazy, show. Crazy, man. Yeah, they were tight friends. Well, that's why Letterman had Walker on the show for a long time. Yeah. Same thing with Wallace. He was tight with Wallace. Yeah. yeah. His old stuff. I mean, he used to have guys like Hunter S. Thompson on yeah. his show. and like That original really show? smart. Like, you would never see that on modern, no. late night talk show. Well, he was the original Late Late Show. Yeah. Which, the first one was on, was it NBC? It was NBC, right? Right after Carson. I that was so, yeah. that was the original late late show I yeah. think, when he he had that day show for a while I think right, yep. but then he had the original late late show that was a whole different vibe. And they went to CBS yeah. and he toward the end he got kind of hipper again and cooler, but it was all about celebrities and people. By then everybody knew him, you yeah. know guys like Tom Hanks knew him well and would show up to see him and stuff. Yeah, or did the show a bunch. It's like an infomercial now. Yeah, like it's just one big commercial the whole time. Yeah, I can't watch any of the stuff. Any of the late night strip shows. I, I heard it's uh, they're all going away because they're not profitable anymore. That's what I heard. Because no one's watching them. Nobody's watching them. Well, you know, there's so many options out there. There's yeah. a million different good streaming ideas out yeah. there now. And now I didn't see it yet, but uh, Che and uh, uh, Colin Jost did this live New York thing last night on yeah, Netflix or something. Yeah, I saw them Net promoting that. Yeah, Netflix or Hulu. It went out last night. Who were the comics on it? 
I don't. Yeah. I didn't see all the information on it, but last yeah. night was the first night, so I'm interested yeah. to check it out. It's live. Yeah. It's live streaming. So, yeah. um, I think I think that's where we're headed. I think we're headed to stuff like that. Yeah. And a lot of stuff they shoot now, like even commercials, they have this raw look, like you're on a phone and you're awkward. Sure. It's not nothing's yeah. professional anymore. I saw Kamala Harris do that with Barack Obama. <laughs> oh really? Oh, yeah, that's right. Really right. She's on the phone. She's like, "Hey, Barack." Yeah. But yeah, it's all about reality TV, which is funny because reality TV is not real. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's like, totally yeah. uh, made up. Yeah. It's set up scenarios and they edit it into what the storylines they want to use. Yeah. You know, so and people get so emotionally attached to these things, you know, that they're like, yeah, it's they think it's funny. It's they've you they've almost found a brilliant way to take real life. Make it look real on camera and fake, it, but fake it and sure. throw it out there, and people buy it. Yeah, you know. Well, that's why everything is trolling. Like, right. Everything is trolling you. Right. Trying to manipulate your uh, emotions and get a reaction. Like you can't have anything authentic or sincere. <laughs> right. Right. Or have a like a a real serious point of view no. conversation. No, we don't want that. Right. Want but like you said the other anger. day, the anger, the one that sells is anger. Yeah, anger. Yeah. The more they piss you off, the more people watch. Yeah. Which is like my algorithm, YouTube are loaded with, and Twitter's the worst. Where there's really dark stuff on there. It's really oh, yeah. angry fed. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna believe this, and I'm yeah. like, I don't, I don't. Okay. They got totally destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I see, I see that clip all the time. You're yeah, like, what are you? Yeah. Doing? Watch Bill yeah. Burr destroy <laughs> this portion over <laughs> this. And I'm like, all right, it's just a conversation, man. Right. Yeah. No, it, I think it's tough because it's like at some point, like if everything's like that, then how do you not? You know, you at some point you have to unplug. From the the rage, you know. Yeah. Like you have to have moments of like just relaxation and quiet and. We well, need like balance, our bro. Entire society is like. <sighs> yeah, on. it's on kilt all the time. Yeah. You got to have that moment where you take off the mask. Like if you're <laughs> if you're dressed up as Mickey, you got that moment where you take off the mask yeah. and you have a cigarette. <laughs> right. You know, just that, yeah. just to balance shit out. Yeah, I hate it. And, and that's why I don't really do social media. I just, during uh, COVID, I just gave it up because I guess, like, this isn't healthy. Right. And when I did that, like, my mind was better. I don't, I don't, but I don't now know. I have to get back on it because I gotta do stuff for my comedy. That's know? the problem. It's like, I put it's just what it is. Well, especially like a week, like, you know, this week was difficult for me. I had a lot of personal shit going on. Yeah. But I luckily I scheduled my posts a week or two ahead of time. Yeah. So I didn't have to edit a lot and post a lot of stuff this week. But it's, it's, it's draining to yeah. keep current. It's, and you have to keep current if you want to keep working. So this all works until you get to a point where you don't have to keep working anymore. It gets back to what I said earlier about yeah. it. If I could, I'd get out. Yeah, you know, it's almost like if I could retire. I mean, I'm not. It's like I mean, we're lucky in a lot of ways. We get to do stand up. We're traveling, you know. Yeah, and we're doing what we love. I mean, we love the best part of it was being on stage. Yeah, that's the coolest part. Well, what's crazy about stand up is you can do it for forever. You can do it forever. I mean, we work with people that are like in almost eighty years old, and they're still on stage, and they're hilarious. Who's that cat? Amazing. Do you know Andy Huggins? No. He's a guy out of Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never met him, never worked with him, but he's a local Houston guy. Houston guys uh, uh, worship him. Yeah. He's one of those old school, great comic, real funny, right. quick stuff. He did AMF. Is that right? AMF? All my, what is this show? The, uh, America's Got Talent. AMT. Okay. He did AMT. I watched that clip the other day. Okay. It's a lot of quick, uh, a lot of quick one-liners. But I think I know who you're talking about. He's an older dude, yeah. man. He's been in his 80s. You know, he's yeah. been around a long time. All the comics yeah. respect him. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah. He's never really blown up. Yeah. He doesn't. I think he tried ships for a while. It didn't work out. Maybe you know. Yeah. One liners are tough on ships. You yeah. know, especially now. Yeah. Now it's even harder. If like a, like a journey's cruise or a long cruise and an older cruise, yeah. he could probably get away with that. Like some of those. those. Sure, it's an it's an antiquated style of comedy. Right. But the, on these yeah. like Carnival Norwegian, the newer yeah. style, and yeah. even some of the yeah, the want... crowds are changing to where sure you better get a comic to change with the crowd, otherwise it's not going to go well. Yeah. Yeah, no, now modern comedy has to be more like Jerry Springer. Right. It's got to be like... No, you're 100% right. In the audience. Yeah. 
embarrassing people. It is. She did yeah, what? Yeah, Wait, yeah, guys, yeah, come yeah, here. Yeah, come yeah. here. She was on the Vino and did what? Trying to get people to break up in real yeah, time. Yeah. Then, like, you know, yeah, right, right, right. You know she banged your friend, right? You know she yeah. There's no way she like, didn't bang that guy. Look at that guy. He's gorgeous. Exactly. You're telling yeah. me you didn't bang his best friend. <laughs> Which is funny because comics are like the worst, like, Social like yeah. relationship people. Yeah, we can't. Any yeah, we can't. Yeah, that we're giving people a relationship. Here's, here's what I think. Here's what I think about helping the. Relationship. No, you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them have been either divorced three times or right. girlfriends. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> Made every bad decision. Every single one. Yeah. Everyone. But I'm gonna give you this happily married thirty. You know, yeah. years. Yeah, hear me out. I got an idea. <laughs> you really missed out. <laughs> but it's like but that's the way they want it to be. It is the way they want it to be, and people like in social media has trained people to get to the point where they want they show up to shows ready to say shit. I can hear when you start a show, you can hear people yell shit. Yeah, and a lot of times I'll ignore it. Yeah. <clears throat> I try to do it on my terms. So if I hear something, I'll yeah. acknowledge. But you got to be careful one in how you acknowledge it because if you acknowledge too early to too many people, more people start yelling. Yeah, okay. So I usually ignore the first handful of them and then go in yeah. to the crowd on my terms and try to dictate it. Sure. Otherwise, all you are is a, like when you do that bit last night, the heckling thing. That was very, that was hilarious, by the yeah, way. Thanks. And I love afterwards thanks. when you go, "Where were you during the heckling <laughs> right, thing?" Right, right. Things you didn't say anything. Right, and they didn't get the concept of heckling the act. When you're like, you're going to make fun of the act. You're like, you're short. You're like, I don't think you understand yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> you're four eyes. Now you're just describing me. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what heckling is. Yeah, one guy goes, you suck. You're like, no, you, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because people are so mean. That's why I say the thing, pretend we're on Facebook. Yeah, you know, that was a People are yeah. so mean. They're capable of being mean. You're around them all the time. Right. Like, we're in the airport. Like, just listen to, like, the collective consciousness of people in the airport. It's just negative, angry. And then you ask them to be mean, and they can't do it. They can't do it. And that's funny to me for some reason. It's like an asking an actor to act like he's acting. Like you've never heard. <laughs> right. Like an actor says one of the hardest things. <laughs> yeah. One of the hardest things. And it's hard to do. I've, I've done it. One of the hardest things for an actor right. to do is pretend like you're someone who does not act. Right. And then act. Yeah. And so act bad. They go, yeah. So to, to pretend, uh, okay. Yeah. It, it's hard for them to do it. Yeah. So when people have to try to be mean, they don't realize they're they're trying to be us. They're thinking, all right, I want to do something different than I normally am, not knowing they should be doing exactly what they normally do. Just yeah. be mean. Yeah, you know? it's easy. It is easy if you just <laughs> yeah. Another a good a good day for that too is like sometimes I love walking around the ship on the first day. It doesn't matter what line you're on. Yeah. Any line. People are complaining about the, the elevators for sure. You know what I mean? And the crowds and the buffet. I mean, it's all this. I can't believe my luggage. It's just nonstop walking around listening to these people going, you guys yeah. are on vacation. Yeah. And also, I never. So one, one time I was like, bitter bitch about the elevators. I'm like, you know, there are 3,000 people are getting on the ship today. Sure. I go, that's yeah. going to be more traffic these elevators have seen, yeah. you know, for the rest of the week. They should be more prepared. People right. just think that. Yeah. And you're like, I, uh, I or can't. you can just walk down one flight. You, you can know, do you that. Can, yeah, you can use the stairs. Yeah, even four flights aren't that bad. Mm-hmm. You know, it's gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. That always cracks me up when I see an able, sort of able-bodied person take one floor of the thing. You're like, Ugh. yeah, I think we just created this culture of of whining and complaining. Yeah, you know, and it's it's like if you ever ask someone, is that really important? Like, are you really like, is that really the worst thing that's happened? To right. Me? Well, that's the yeah, conversation. Put it in perspective. This is the conversation I have, especially my youngest daughter. That's her thing, man. Mm-hmm. She dwells on something where I'm like, "Hey, no one's dead. Yeah, you know, right. This is just a, a, a what's gonna what's the worst possible scenario now? Yeah. You do something different. I go. That's. Yeah. I mean, it really could be. But the problem, you know, what perpetuates that is yeah. the social media, man. Because everybody sure. bitches all day long on social media. It's and they're like, heard, and then they have people going, "You're right, man. High five. That guy's yeah. an idiot." You know, so yeah. they feel like they can say something that everyone's going to jump on board with them. Right. I just don't get mad. Like I don't get mad about things. Like I get upset. Like traveling obviously sucks. Yeah. That's the one thing I'll be like, "Oh, I gotta go here and there, whatever." But besides that, if I'm at a restaurant and they bring me the wrong thing. I just eat it. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is a 
this looks, this looks <laughs> good. Like, all right, whatever. This looks good. You know, like I don't. Even, I, I just see all these people getting in anger and fights and confrontation. It's like when I do that thing where I'm have them yell at me. Sometimes it gets really intense. Like they'll I say bet. some really mean shit. Sure, right. Yeah. And at the end of it, it will get I find out make it into a laugh. And then I'll say, see what happened? You guys all yelled mean shit and no one pulled out a gun. Right. That's and great. No one got mad. Yeah. And we just moved on with our lives. That's really great. Because no one's ever going to remember this. Right. And it's like people don't have that ability. They have this kind of like, they have to protect their, their, their... Uh, it's an ego-based thing. Yeah. Yeah. They have to protect themselves. Everybody's ego is on tilt. Everyone's. Yeah. How, so how could you say that? Why would you do that to me? What? It's always <laughs> like I always try to teach the kids. I go, this is a harsh lesson. I tell everyone. I learned it in therapy. I learned to let shit go. I learned. Yeah. I let a lot of shit go. Yeah. I mean, shit happens. Where I'm just like, oh, it's okay. And I always go, the world and or the world doesn't know you anything, and yeah. no one owes you anything. And you're on your own. So you can't. When people things happen, it's not a personal attack on you. You got to just deal with it and move on. And I, the travel thing is even better. I just assume the travel day. Right. I know right. every time I go to travel, I go. I'll, yeah. I'll be lucky to be home in twenty four hours. Right. And when shit goes wrong, people are losing their shit, and I'm like, "All right, okay, where am I going? What, where's, <laughs> what gate? Okay, and just go. You know, just whatever. It's yeah. not their fault, especially you know. But you learn to man. And plus, learning to let shit go. I don't know about you, man. I just feel better and lighter. You know, yeah. I just feel like it's it, it, it's heavy to carry around negative and anger you know well that's a very mature way to think about forgiveness like when, when I realized like the thing about forgiveness isn't when you're a kid you're like oh I like forgiveness because I'll do bad shit and people will forgive me for it right <laughs> I'll get away right. with something sure but really what it's about is if someone does something against you and you let it go you're not thinking about it anymore right and it's exactly what you just said, you know. Right, and you got it. It's a magical thing if you're able to do that. It's that's an even deeper part of it. That's another thing I learned in therapy. I just had this conversation with, uh, oh, it was my ex-wife actually. <laughs> it was my ex-wife because of the stuff yeah. that's going on with the kids. Yeah. And uh, she apologized for something that happened. And she goes, I don't know why they won't forgive me. And I go, that's the problem. I go, that's the problem. And she goes, what? I go, when you when you apologize, that's not that's not it's not about you. You're and you're not giving. You know, you should have to apologize without expecting something in return. Sure. It's supposed to be a selfless act. Right. You're supposed to be sincere and go. You know what? I was out of line. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, and that's it. There, you don't need to hear. That's okay. I accept. But sometimes they won't accept, and you got to be cool. You got to go. You know, I, I, I I understand why you wouldn't accept. I was a total asshole there. I, yeah, it's got to be on. You got to totally let that go. Yeah. But too many people apologize and they're like, what? What? It's not good enough. <laughs> right. And you're like, what? What do you? Then that's not an apology. Well, I like the I like the uh, the political apology and like I'd like to apologize <laughs> what, to which anyone one? who got upset. That's it. Yeah, the offended. offended yeah. <laughs> like they never take accountability. For what they I do. didn't mean to offend <laughs> anyone. My intent wasn't to. <laughs> Right. Really? That's, that's not even an apology. It's just yeah. a statement over what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the only way to get over stuff, man. Like, people get so obsessed with, like, grievances and anger. And it, I just let all that shit go, man. It's, dude, it's hard when it comes to family stuff, too. Like, I come from a family oh, yeah. where we had my mom held grudges my mom didn't talk to me for like 20 oh, years yeah. it was a whole thing yeah but that's and my brother's like that he'll get mad yeah. and my daughters are like that with their mom right now and i'm always like I go, Man, I'm catholic just... family yeah okay yeah. oh yeah there you go of course oh, and the guilt is a uh, yeah. well-wielded weapon in that yeah. uh, in that family <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they'll get still get so angry they won't talk to someone for a long oh yeah time. yeah it's yeah. funny, and, it, and it's because my and it, with my mom when she died, uh, she wasn't talking to my brother Scott, so it's kind of an issue with him, yeah. right? Yeah, I went years without talking to her, but you could always I used to do a joke about it. I go, you could always tell my mom wasn't talking to someone when she ended up in the hospital. I got a text from my stepfather. I had to read the numbers and see which one wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I was looking, go Bing, 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 Bing. bing. Oh shit, yeah. Andy! I call you Andy. Andy. Uh, mom's in the hospital, yeah. you know, because there was always one that was left out of the loop. There was always yeah. one kid yeah. out of the five that was on the shit list. Yeah. Did they ever do the thing where you tell him, oh. I'm not going to talk to him, but you oh, tell yeah. him. My mom did. <laughs> you tell your brother, yeah. oh, mom, please, don't. Right. Please, mom, he's 52 years old. Right. Why don't you tell him? 
<laughs> I'm like, he's 50 years old and I have two children. And, you know, I, gotta, I can't do this. All right, what am I, the ambassador to Iraq? Like, I gotta send messages for yeah. you? Like, I gotta do the translation like, for you? Yeah. No, I think that's a big family thing, maybe. You know, like, big families have a hard time with like forgiveness and then they hold on to stuff that happened a long time ago I don't know I get how many you brothers know. and sisters did you have I only got three three brothers so you're I one of four I have one brother and one sister okay so you're one of three so, but my brother and sister won't forgive my dad for anything but I've managed to just because I don't know he's a musician and he's like one of us and I kind of understand Who, your dad yeah my dad so I kind of understand sense. the whole being aloof and an artist and yeah. creative and not like all the others, you know, and selfish somewhat, you know. Yeah, dude, that's interesting because uh, my youngest daughter, Lily, who's been going through all this stuff this week, you know, yeah, uh, she reminds me of me at that age. I'm almost yeah. the exact same person. Yeah. And she's really into, she's painting, she does hair, she's an artist, she's an actor, she's, yeah. I mean, she's an artist. She, and I tell her all the time, I go, you are exactly who I was yeah. at, at 20. So when she does stuff and her mom or people get mad, I kind of understand it, because I, I, I know where she's coming from. She's got more of an artistic view. She's a pro, easily ADHD, which I, she was diagnosed, I wasn't, I'm sure I am. You know, yeah. I think most comics are, most are. Yeah. And maybe I'm wrong, but this guy's... Maybe. But uh, I think a lot of comics are ADHD. But I was, and I was all yeah. over the place. Yeah. So I always understood. I could understand that point of view more. That was a weird moment during COVID too, where people that, remember that during COVID, where people were like, when artists were out of work, and they were like, uh, "Well, you know, you guys are going to just have to get a real job." You know, yeah. they said that to everybody. They had billboards yeah. up in New yeah. LA and stuff. Yeah. And it showed dancers dancing into a doctor's office or whatever. You yeah. know, it was like this thing. Um. And I'm like, that dancer studied at Juilliard for six years. You don't, this isn't, people don't just show up and, I'm, you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Yeah. But I have lots of people that are like, what are you going to do now? Because I don't know, but I'm, this is what I do. Right. It's, I, I can't, you know, I'm not going to go, I looked. Yeah. You know, and even then the, even then the jobs I yeah. could have got in the restaurant business paid less than the job I got doing comedy. Yeah. And I go, I can't. Well, the two things, the one thing that was weird that was, I never assumed comedy wouldn't be there. Right. Like I always thought it would yeah, be yeah. around. Right. And when it disappeared, that was crazy. Been... And then I was driving a car around, you know, and I'd be doing my jokes to the people in the car. Oh, that's cool. And they'd be like, you should be a comedian. <laughs> and, I'd get, and I'd be like, yes, I should be a comedian. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I should be. And then I'd, I'd be I like, should be getting paid for the same thing. But this things. is the best part. I'd be like, I'd be like, well, I used to be a comedian. I used to travel the world. I've been on TV. And they'd look at me and they'd go, what happened? <laughs> I go, no, I don't know. A, a, a worldwide <laughs> plan? <laughs> this country shut down? There's no traveling? Yeah. So that used to make me laugh, but... Oh man, that's funny. Did you ever do any of the outdoor garage shows or any other stuff? Ah, uh, no, no. I I tried one Zoom show. That was I didn't like the Zoom comedy, and uh, I just was like too angry about it all. I was very upset about the fact. I mean, not a fa not mostly about what happened, but just the way people were during it. Right. Like, I, I think we talked about this the other day. I thought it would be the one thing that would bring people together. So yeah, the whole world. Because they'd be like, oh, we're all kind of interconnected. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all the same. It doesn't yeah, matter. That, yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah, it was the opposite. Dude, it was crazy. It just gave us like six more things to argue about that yeah. they divided down and had us all fight. And what was crazy is I, I lived in Orlando, so Florida was open. Right. So the whole time, people were on vacation in Florida. Right. Right? And I'd pick people up from the airport, like, and they hadn't left their house in, a year, in like, a year, you oh, know? Oh, God, yeah. And right. uh, they'd, they'd be like, oh, man, we heard things were terrible in Florida. Everyone's dying and COVID's crazy. And I'd be like, well, why did you bring your whole family here? <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a bad idea. Yeah. You want to get your You go check out the carnage? Yeah. <laughs> so that was, uh, you know, I, I think I'll always be pissed about that. You know? Yeah, I was... I was there's a, no resolution to it. 
Right. It just stopped. We're like, oh, no, we're it just went doing, away. We're not and, doing it anymore. And then there's still there, there's still people that are kind of arguing about it, but a lot of the stuff that you couldn't talk about back then, they were so uber, like, talk about different points of view. You couldn't have a different point of view of what was in the mainstream because they would attack you immediately. Sure. And a lot of the stuff they pointed out uh, has, has some of it turned out to be is true. Yeah. And it's in pay, you hear about it, but it's that page five shit where you go, oh, they found out here that uh, the re- respirators actually might have caused more deaths than they yeah. didn't because it didn't, your lung's not made to be yeah. in a respirator for a long period of time. And it yeah. actually was a bad thing to rush people to respirators. Uh, anyway, the tomorrow at the fair, you know, they just go <laughs> somewhere else. Right. And, but back then you couldn't right. even hunch and go, hey, maybe these respirators for two right. weeks at a time are a bad idea. Right. No, this uh, is what we need the hospital space yeah, for and the thing. And We're right, you're wrong. Right, just shut right. up. And they were shamed. They used yeah. shaming as a powerful thing True. across the board during COVID for all kinds of stuff. Oh, people would wish me to die. Oh, like, did they really? Yeah, yeah, dude. Dude, because uh, I was, I would, um, like, I didn't wear, I, I didn't, I wore a mask if people, I, I treated the mask like a condom. If you want me to wear one, I'll wear one. Right, yeah, I did that. But if you don't want me to, I'm then, cool with then it, Then I'll wear it, right, man. And, uh, so I wouldn't wear one unless you wanted me to. And, uh, this one lady, she's been nuts on me. She's like, I hope you die and blah, blah, you get COVID and your kids die and all this stuff. That's so amazing to me that you actually <laughs> offer, offer yeah. to wear the mask. yeah. You, you, why aren't you wearing all the time? So she's yeah. attacking you for, oh my God. And I was like, I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> like, have a nice day. Uh, like, yeah. Like, just flipped out on me. Well, I lived in, I lived in LA and it was, they were brutal out there, man. They were really, yeah. everything was strict. It was really hardcore. If you did anything wrong, groups of people would call you out at a store. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, we had, we used to go on hikes. Yeah. I had got, we used to go on hikes all the time. I do a joke about it now, but. The guy yelled at me once. The girls and I went every day on a walk or a hike. We're walking down the street one day, and I hear some guy yelling. And we didn't wear a mask when we're outside. Mm-hmm. I hear some guy yelling, and I turn around and look, and he's three doors down across the street. He's like, did you need a mask? I got some, if you guys don't have. I go, no, we're, we're good, man. We're fine. So we carried him with us everywhere to put him on to go in stores. But he's like, you should be wearing that mask. And I go, I got it, I got it, I got it. So people were really over the top intense yeah. everywhere. And we yeah. went, you would go to Target. I don't know if you had this, but we had the eighth, you would get in the line for Target in the morning. Yeah. And we had to be six feet. All, we were all the way down, two blocks down, just standing in line waiting to get to Target. Yeah. It would take us all fucking morning. And then I go, uh, in October of 2020, I booked a gig in Oklahoma City. And I did a run through Oklahoma uh, for Jeff Jones. Yeah, uh, if you ever worked for him. Yep. Yeah, yeah, who passed away. Thing. Um, R.I.P. Yeah, 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 I love. He was a really great dude. Yeah, he was a great dude. Um, but uh, I went to uh, Tulsa, and dude, it was like it was like a different world. Yeah, I'm like, the same. no, in the airport. Yeah. I'm like, geez, yeah. so the airport's a little strict, yeah. but I knew met a guy where at his bar, no one's wearing a mask, yeah. you know. And then honestly, yeah. a week later, he called me. He got COVID, yeah. but I never got it. But yeah. and then he got over it. I mean, it's I mean, if you've gotten it, then they got over it. I mean, whatever you want to say about how intense it was the arguments people handle it so differently but in LA they would who, they would shame you I lost I have three friends that don't talk to me anymore really yeah one in particular was a girl that I was kind of dating kind of dating but yeah. I, was, I was really I was really into her whatever it's yeah. a long story but she there's other reasons it fell out but she was so hardcore left we got into an argument I didn't want to get into it on Facebook but it was uh, it was the same but yeah. they were so intense that uh, some people don't talk to me anymore because of the way I, just because of yeah. my viewpoint. Not what I forced. It's not like I walked in the house with no mask going, hey! You yeah. know, it's, it's just, I go, well, here's what I think. And they go, well, you're part of the problem. I go, I go, it's just what I think. I go, I don't. Well, what was weird when I, I got COVID, well, it started in March. I got it in June, probably. And uh, when I got it, everyone in my life acted like I did something wrong. Okay. Like they were all like, "What did you do? You've been breaking the rules." Right. I'm like, "I'm the victim, dude. I'm the victim. You would never do this to any other medical situation." Yeah. You know, if someone had cancer, yeah. you would be like, "Well, what did you do?" Yeah. Wrong? What did you do? You know. Right. Like, and uh, I, but when I got it, I I remember I went to the, uh, I went to the. Uh, the county medical office or whatever to get tested. It was one of the drive through things. And they're like, yep, you got it. And I was like, oh my God, should I go to the hospital? And I'm like, am I going to be okay? And I go, it's like, nah, just go home, watch some TV. Yeah, right, yeah. Sit That's on they told the couch. Me, yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, that, that 
doesn't seem like a reason to yeah. shut down the world. Right. <laughs> they go retest in a week. Retest. Retest later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was the same exact thing in yeah. California. They, they, once you saw the medical people, they would just go home and don't do anything. Yeah. It was a weird time, man. I'm glad it's over. I'm really glad it's over. I don't think they could do it again. Well, they, they originally were talking about this monkeypox thing where the the who the World Health Organization was yeah. saying it's possible we're going to have a monkeypox <laughs> pandemic. And I'm reading that going, yeah. oh, this is not going to go well. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, this, there's no way you're going to... Uh, shut down you know that's not going to happen that way again I just yeah. can't see any of that happen again they mishandled a lot of that stuff it was really weird yeah and I think they uh, you know I feel bad for like my kids you man you only get to be 10 once I know you know yeah we were talking about this the other day yeah, like, my daughter lost her freshman year of college yeah 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 like I, I lost my what 45th and 46th year not a big deal yeah right exactly but yeah you're already 12 yeah that's, that's a, a big, big chunk deal. of your life yeah <laughs> well especially like the hardest gap for me was the 17 to 19 years yeah. or the 18 to 20 yeah. and that's a whole senior college senior college yeah, you know that's I mean? a big step and it's prom relationships dating yeah. you're really starting to learn how to be in a date someone you know i mean you yeah. take those years away from a kid and i'm worried about that that group of society moving forward how they're going to function. You're already noticing parts of it. Some people aren't socially... Uh, oh, no. They, they're they hard time being social. Yeah. Just saying hello or being at a dinner party or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. insane to watch where people yeah. get uncomfortable. Don't make out with strangers anymore. I know, dude. We're, what happened to the days when <laughs> you just make out with somebody and go your separate ways? <laughs> people don't even do that. Now they... Do you do the? Uh, you, you ever done the dating app thing? I did right when I was going right yes. at the beginning, right at the end of my di- or divorce time, yeah. right after that. I did the tender. Can you imagine if that's all your whole dating experience? I know, right? That's it's all you. So know. miserable. Uh, and based on a lie, it's all yeah. based on a lie. Every <laughs> single one, one person I met out of all of that that was pretty decent was like that a- we dated for a while. She was really great. She yeah. was awesome. But that everyone else was, it was not. It was it's just crazy that, like, they want such a specific thing. Like, I want this and that and this and that and all these. And he's got to like this and she's got to like that. And that's not a real person. Right, right, right. You know, you can't get exactly what you No, want. it's like you're building an avatar. Yeah. And you're expecting another avatar. Yeah, like, and, you, and you're like, do you have the magic flute? Yes, I do have the yeah. magic flute. Do you have the actual Alexa? <laughs> yes, well, then let's journey together into the woods. And the two of us can take on right. the great deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. That's, it seems like that's what you're building. Yeah. But none of it, everything's fluid with people. You now, know what I mean? I was always like, I don't know about you, but when I... I, I like dating lots of different kinds of people. Yeah, I'm like Like, I'm too. open to everybody. Like, I don't have a like I, type, like a specific no. type. Which is no. people get weirded out when I tell them that. And I'll show two different... I dated her, I dated her. Well, I have one thing. I like women that say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I find that I'm very a big attractive. fan of women that say I yes. I like women that say yes. yes. <laughs> we'll start with that. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. Like, now they have this thing I watch... You ever watch the... Uh, there's a, like something called the Manosphere where it's like all these YouTubers that give dating advice and they hate women. And all that stuff, it's hilarious. Oh, no, you know, I've, there's a, some girls I've watched. There's some you know, yeah. There's some girls that do this whole women... It's almost like an anti of what we were talking about yesterday, where the girl, women grew up saying they were men, they didn't need men. Yeah. And then they have a... They, it was the anti... What do they call it? The anti... Uh, 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 damn it. The anti-men, not anti-male. I'm trying to... The de-maleization uh, of stuff. I don't know. It's a thing gen- that generation is going through. Uh-huh. Where they're trying to make men less men. The, the man factor. It's kind yeah. of. It's exactly what we were talking about last night. But I can't right. find the right words to put it out. Yeah. It's like there's something about just being a man that was that was good. It used to be good. Yes. It used to be great. Yeah. And then it became. It's all bad. All of it's bad. All the man shit is bad. Toxic masculine. That's it. Okay. And then there's a girl. There's a couple of girls that do these things I see on YouTube where they come out and they critique other women. They go, "Here's why it's not working out. It's because you right. expect this, this, and this." Yeah. And they're actually kind of on point those are actually pretty good yeah they're, I like those a lot but you see a lot of women come out with videos about why they can't find a man to do all these things it's all the things they were bitching about three years ago that, that men do they, yeah. like, why can't a guy open the door for me I go yeah. three years ago you didn't want anybody yeah, to open right. the door for you yeah you know so there's a lot of that that's going on that I see 
on the on the YouTube. Well, they do this thing now where apparently, and I don't know if this is true, but it's a thing that on the internet where they say women want six a, a guy to be six feet tall, make six figures, and have six inches of penis. Right. Okay. But that's six, six, six. That's the fucking devil. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you literally, <laughs> you're literally requesting to be yeah, with this the devil. Yeah, this we're looking for. Which is, uh, you know, I, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's gonna remember your birthday. Well, yeah. dude, the social media stuff, especially with relationships, you know, it's big on Instagram now. I don't know if you've seen them, these videos. A big thing now are videos of young girls showing just. No, they're they're mainly each other. I think they're trying to feed you to their OnlyFans. Uh, you know, so they dress in a bikini, they yeah. bounce their boobs or whatever, and they go, "Is it wrong that I'm really into guys over fifty that are bald that want to bang me and oh, blah, yeah. all this stuff?" Yeah. So there's a ton of these videos, yeah. and I'm sure I'm getting all these videos because I'm a guy over yes, fifty. You know what I mean? This is exactly why I'm getting them. Yeah, so they, everyone makes me laugh. I'm like, yeah. this is hilarious. They go, "How yeah. many guys are falling for this?" That I'm I'm 23 and I want to bang a seven to 60 year old. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But there's tons of these girls that are doing this. Yeah. But they're making money off of the Insta a little bit, and they're really making money off the OnlyFans. Sure. Because if people join, I've never I'm not, I'm not on OnlyFans. I don't have an account. I don't go in there. This and, is what we need to stop the OnlyFans thing. Not the women. Women, you're allowed to do what they want, but the dudes are just giving random chicks money so yeah. they can see pictures of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's gotta go. Go out and get you a real live woman. I, yeah. Like, and give her the money. Right. You know what I mean? Well, and it's even, I, I've always, t I talk about this a lot. I think it's just like as it's much a, of a problem on the other end. Dude. What are these young 20 year old girls going to do? This is almost like the new version of porn. In 20 years, they're going to be off the internet. So, you know, yeah. they can't do this forever. And, yeah. and there's girls that are 17, 18, 19 making millions of dollars or hundreds well, that, of thousands of dollars. Well, that's why I feel like I shouldn't give them advice because I don't know what it's like to be a woman. Maybe a woman can live with herself yeah. and, and live in her giant house with her McLaren yeah. and... And her kid's like, Mommy, Mommy, who's my dad? And she's got to bring up her OnlyFans. <laughs> it's number 1748953. And she's a great mom. And yeah. Maybe I, but, but to me, is the lone, it must be so lonely yeah. to have an Only. The only gr women you interact with are on OnlyFans. Right. And that's your only, like, go get a real. The world is Full of people. There's right, right. like a three, what, three and a half billion women on the planet. Right. All you need is one. Yeah. You know, and a live woman is a million times better than a, one on the internet. Like, yeah. you just can't replace that. But for some reason, there's all these dudes that are just online giving money well, I to think random chicks. I think it's almost a new reality. Though. It's sad. It, 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 <laughs> it is, but it, it's almost like the way that the, it just operates that way now. It's just, it's weird. Like I, like I said, I don't, I've never, I don't go on OnlyFans and I've never thrown money at anybody online. Yeah. Like I know friends are on OnlyFans. I won't even get an account. It's stupid to me to yeah. go in there and do all this. But you're right. It's just all this generation and girls just getting, and you, you see, or they, they do the same thing with Twitch, maybe on a different level. Because then you can see how much money they're getting throughout the thing. My, my brother yeah. just Twitch. You get a thing up in the middle. I gave you fifty bucks. Here's a hundred yeah. bucks. Here's a hundred bucks. Just because yeah. she's bouncing around doing her doing the sure. housekeeping in a bikini. You know what yeah. I mean? Which is watching a hot girl play video games. Yeah, right. That's the big yeah. uh, the girl gamers, the young yeah. girl gamers. Yeah, I did, I just think the internet's bad for people. Like they need to go live in the real world. What? And it's not. <coughs> it can't replace real life. I always, I always imagine, what if, uh, what if it went away? What if something happened? You know what I mean? Right. Like satellite-wise or technology-wise, yeah. that we've lost the internet. Yeah, we've just lost it, and everyone had to go back to being a human being and interacting and being a person. Yeah, thousands of people would just fucking kill themselves and lose their minds. They couldn't punch yeah. it. Probably. They couldn't. They, I mean, they really. People have to function with the internet. Yeah. You know, that's their whole lives. If they had to get up and go down to the local uh, village, the bar or the whatever, and store and say hi to someone, or just interact, even just as a human being. Yeah. I guess I just like I. My kids are going through puberty, so I'm trying to like talk to them about how to f be in a relationship. Dude, this could and be hard like, with boys, bro. I think it's not as hard as girls. Really? I think so. 
Because boys can be... Boys... I like the fact they're dorky and no one wants to have sex with them. I think that's good for them. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Right, right. Like, I, I, I used to lament the fact that when I was in high school, no one wanted to day me or whatever but I think in a way that was like a like a, a force field yeah to keep away like responsibility and like you know bad people in my life and uh, when you have a girl it's kind of like they're so they have to encounter the world in a different way yeah I think it's easier for boys to be lonely or, or yeah you know, I guess that's attention. right when I was thinking about also I'm thinking about the porn aspect oh of yeah because boys are so boys are always way yeah. guys are in, more into porn than women they just are sure. and boys early on it's just one of the yeah. things you do you know you, yeah. you know, you beat off 10 times a day when you're a teen <laughs> you know when yeah. I first discovered it it was all I could do for fucking weeks you know yeah so it just changes your whole life so that aspect of it is weird because that's also that's become a problem with dating for women I know my daughters go through that end of it that they date sure. guys and they want to, you know, it's a lot more intense to, right. my, like Anna for years didn't really get into a serious relationship because yeah. she's like, I go, how, I'll be like, how, she wouldn't tell me she wouldn't have a date, but I'd find out, I go, how'd it go? Because they only wanted one thing, I just wasn't into it. And I'm like, yeah. okay. And I'm like, thank God that's the way you think. I'm really happy. That's, that's good. You know, and she found a good guy because of it. Danny's yeah. a great guy. Her boyfriend's a really great dude. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, so Surehead yeah. was in the right place, but it, like every boy, you know, there were times when even Lily was like, I'm not going to that party. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Why? Because because I I just know, Dad. It's gonna be. There's. It's just. It, it's a. Lot, and they're they're both really intense. On. I don't need to go somewhere to be sexualized by a bunch of guys that just wanna. I mean, they're that's really great. intense about that. It is great. Yeah. I was like, thank God. I'm really glad yeah. that's the way you are, as yeah. opposed to showing up in a fucking bra. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's they've. That's one thing that's really helped me with the kids. Plus, they're not really into drugs. Those two or booze. Those yeah. two things. I'm like any uh, other problem, any other problem I can sense, you I need can to solve. Write a book on that one. Dude, I don't know how that's that happened. Right. Dude, I was into drugs. It was a comedian. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Dude. I, I don't think want to be like I you. think it could be it. Yeah. I think it could be it. Well, then it worked. Then it worked. And then See, fuck everyone that said I was an asshole at twenty. Because <laughs> it made two decent human beings. Yeah. I just think like I want to tell them like the key to not if you're alone. The key to not being alone is one person. Like, our society makes boys think they have to be, like, these giant... You gotta get all the girls. That's what makes you cool. Right. And really, all you need is one. Yeah. That's all you really need. Yeah. And once you get one, getting another one's easier. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, but the hardest, the hardest threshold to go is from zero to one. Right. You know, going one to do, to do, that's easier. Right, right. But uh, I've been doing a bit where I want to have advice. I ask the audience, like, I'm like, uh, I want to give my kids advice on how to meet a good woman. Like, how do you tell if a woman's good or not? And then I ask the people <clears throat> in the audience to give me some advice, you know. And the uh, things they get are hilarious. <laughs> The guys always say, the men always say, I just got lucky. Right, right. And the women always say that all women are good. And I'm like, that can't be... <laughs> like, I don't believe that's, a, that's correct. That can't be the two choices. Complete luck or... <laughs> you know, like, right. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not how it goes. And it's funny to see... How, like, what advice would you give a young lad... On how to meet a good woman. And how to meet a good woman? Yeah. Uh, how to tell a person's good. Um, God, that's tough. Always, well, I always tell them, my daughters this. I think, I believe in the power of attraction. So yeah. I think if you treat people the way you want to be treated, you eventually will attract people that yeah. will treat you that way. And uh, the I think the way to find that whether or not someone is good or not is just to find out whether or not they're honest. I think yeah. that's an important thing. Absolutely. I think if someone is honest and they and they and they like if they I'll meet you at eight and they're there, if you know if late is one thing that's fine. But if, yeah. they, if anyone that blows you off, anyone that doesn't you know respect your time, I guess that's yeah, a big they one. If you're value you know you. they value you. It's that it, that's why it goes are right back to in general. <laughs> like I always told my kids there were three lessons yeah. in life to me. One was always do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, always do the best you can, yeah. and always treat people the, the way you want to be treated. And to me, everything in the world in the world falls under those three things. Yeah. On some level. And the be treating people the way you want to be treated is that because that like what great example is Lily just broke up with this kid Robinson, who uh, 
he did, uh, he did, he did, uh, oh, he broke up with her reattached, and she goes, who does that? I go, hey, right, exactly. Yeah. Who does that? Yeah. I go, why would you want to be with someone that does that? Would you do that to someone? No, that's terrible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then you need to, f- don't ever be with someone that does something, you know, yeah. and, and don't, you'll know. I, there, there's a feeling you get in your gut when you're in a bad relationship or you're giving something away. There, sure. There is a feeling. I always go trust that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I was good at ignoring that feeling. Oh, I did too, I dude. I was, <laughs> I was from, like, I was like, oh, she only steals a yeah. little. <laughs> from nineteen yeah. to f- uh, almost when I got married to when I got my yeah. old, my all my twenties. Yeah, it was. I dated one girl. This is the worst story ever. I dated one girl who I knew was cheating on me, and I even babysit her kid while she was cheating, on me. <laughs> and it was just in complete denial that yeah. it happened until one day it was so obvious yeah. I had to walk away. It was yeah. almost like it was a joke. I was. It was a joke. Yeah. And it happened more than a few times. Wow. And I look back at my 20s now going, I was such a big pile of, you know, yeah. I just couldn't. I was Plus, it was a bad time for me. I was getting along with my mom. Sure. And, you know, and I never had a decent example of, you know, my mom and I didn't get along. And she was, you know, she sold, she had her own thing going on. She hung around with shady people, sold drugs. I never had a solid example of a relationship growing up. Right. So I never could figure one out. Yeah. But I, dude, my 20s, I was just, just a big pussy. I gave, I gave, put myself in situations yeah. where you said I would get robbed and go, wow, where's yeah. my stereo? <laughs> oh, she'd be like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, well, it's weird. You've been home all day, yeah. right? You know, just, and I just would ignore it. I ignored it for all the time. Well, you know, my advice I'm giving them, and it's not very popular, is. <laughs> what? <laughs> so you do. You want to find a good woman. You ask her something. Ask her to say something nice about her father. And if she says nothing at all, run away. Because <laughs> eventually, you're going to become her father. And everything she hates about her father, she's going to hate about you. Oh, that's great. You know, that's when good I advice. say that to the audience, you'll hear women go, oh. Yeah. You know, because they're taking it from their side. Sure. Like, oh, you're How could you're you hate your father? Yeah. And you're, it's, yeah, it's making it's mistakes. It's not her fault her yeah. dad was bad. Right, right, right. But the truth is, you cannot change that in people. Right. There's something innate about all of us that uh, who we are as people. Yeah. And there's many different kinds of people. But that's who you are. And if you have daddy, there's a word for it daddy issues. Yeah, it is. Daddy right? issues, yeah. And it's if true. They have them. Really hard to get them. Yeah. Out, really. And then you can spend all your the rest of your life trying to fix her, or, or. <laughs> can try and find a healthy relationship. Yeah, I guess that it's even more true when they're young. Yeah. Like the older you are, yeah, that's funny though, because this we're getting back to Tinder. I would meet people. I would meet people who were 40, 45. Yeah. And they're like, I just never found the right guy. I don't know why. And I'm like, I know why. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's yeah. a reason you're single at yeah. 50 and never yeah. been married. There's just a reason. Right. You know, and it's right. more... It's more. You're not fun. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a fun person. Yeah. You're not. Being a, I've known you for 15 right. minutes and I don't yeah. want to hang out with you anymore. And especially when they, they'll talk about their exes and every there's a shit story with uh, every one of their all assholes. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. And I go, really? Yeah. That's it. Five guys are fucking the problem. <laughs> right. All right, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So and it goes with any relationship, yeah. with any guy. Same thing. If a woman is in a situation, she meets a guy and he's single at fifty. He's got five exes. Sure. You know what I mean? Do you think fucking? You think he's yeah. looking for the right one? No, yeah. it's not. It's not the women. Yeah. It's the guy. Everything starts. One thing I have told my daughters, and I learned in therapy, which I think is the most more valuable lesson, is if you don't have a good relationship with yourself, you're not going to have a good relationship with another individual. So all these people that have these inner demons and problems, yeah. you know, they're fighting them. If you get into that relationship, you're going to get in that fight. You know, well, you also project a lot of your own stuff on right. people. Like I've noticed every, if a, one of my girlfriends is like, "You're cheating on me. You're cheating on me. You're cheating," and I'm not. I'm like, she's cheating on me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's you all know, making like, sense it's like, now. It's like they're telling you the truth without telling you the truth. Yeah, you know? right. It's like a hidden code. You're like a spy deciphering a, co- a conversation. Yeah. Or it's yeah. the code word. It's like, the yellow duck crosses the street. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're like, what am I doing wrong? I don't talk to anyone anymore. And I've canceled all. I changed my phone number and yeah. no one thought I don't hang out with anyone ever. Yeah. And, and she still thinks I'm cheating on her. Right. How is that possible? How is that possible? <laughs> 
What could possibly be? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. Dude, we did it, man. This All was right. a great one. That was like quick. Yeah, see, I, doesn't it? I was dreading it. I was like, what am I going to talk about for an hour? Yeah, we start talking. We get. I'm only boy. stopping now because we're at uh, an hour. I thought we we nailed it. This was well, good. Well, Lenny, man, it's good to see you. Dude, great seeing you, uh, man. I'm really glad that we had the... I wish you could have the extra five days, but I'll see you again. It was great yeah. working with you again. Till yeah. it'll be fun. Yeah. You know, three shows. Uh, one show in the theater. Yeah. We'll hang out a little bit. Yeah. You know. Uh, another cigar, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, one more. That'll yeah. be cool. Do you want to... Uh, do you have anything you want to plug socially? Do it right in the camera. Oh, yeah. The... Uh, check me out on YouTube. Uh... I'm going to start putting clips on there. So, oh, right on. Yeah, uh, do that. Be under, uh, my handle is metard. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think people are retarded. They're metard. Okay. Like, they are the center of the universe. That's great, that's dude. That's all they care about. Dude. That's great. So you can check that out. I can't wait uh, to see the blowback you'll get for that uh, screen name. I don't think it's a bad thing. Me Someone's going to find something. Wrong. Someone will find something. Well, and a funny story. Yeah. All right. Of so I'm on, on my Twitter, I used to have, uh, you know, you have that little blurb underneath. Right. I go, uh, Cerebral Poverty Comic, Father 2. Happy to have these two kids because they're the only two people that don't know I'm retarded. <laughs> That's great. It's funny. <coughs> I mean, I say right in, I'm thinking I'm a comedian. Right. So it's not like, so anyways, this lady hits me up on on Twitter. She's a part of a thing called Autism Speaks. She has a... Uh, oh, I've heard of that. She has a... Uh, never heard of it. It's a charity that helps people with autism. And she's like arguing with me about how can I use that word. And I'm like, well... I'm a I'm a writer, so for me to, to use the words of the society I live in, that's a word that exists in real life. It's like when a rapper uses the N word, right. or when the uh, women use the B word, or whatever words you take the word and you use it on your own for your own purposes, and it empowers you. Right, right. And we went on and on back and forth. So finally, she was like, "Well, we'll just agree to disagree." Okay. So then that night I'm on the ship, I turn on CNN, and there's a CNN uh, uh, Awards of the Year, I forget what they call them, and know who's getting a uh, service person of the year? Autism Speaks. Oh, no. oh great. <laughs> I've been calling her stupid, and she doesn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So. And then, so now I never argue with people. Because I'm like, I don't know, who, I don't need I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't need to see you win an award on national television. Yeah, I mean, she really, I was really out of line, I guess. But yeah. Good for her. Yeah, no, good for it's her. just a word. I mean, I've never called any that, anyone except for myself that word. Like, I don't use words. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't, I don't use, call people words. I just don't, but. I don't care about words. I think it's part of our language. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm with. It's like a Carlin was like. The, Carlin was like the words are. You know what I mean? Words are. My brother's yeah. a big wordsmith too. He's just yeah. Thing. So words are. They're just words. But I've always been amazed, and I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm not. I don't have CP, and I'm not uh, black. But I'm always amazed why you can't say the word retarded about yourself, <laughs> but black people can use the N word about themselves constantly. Yeah. And it's okay, and it's embraced, and it's not. You know, I mean, they're and they're they're. Saying T own, I own the word, I'm in charge, I'm taking control. But the yeah. second you say it, the people just clam up. Well, you know what the difference is. What? I'm actually a retard. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's gonna be my favorite one minute clip to put on this on the fucking social media. That's fucking best. That's the best. That's All the right, best. Man. All right, buddy. Thank you. Oh, so it's uh, uh, me torn on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube? me torn. Right. Yeah, now big limping on uh, Instagram. <laughs> Jesus. And one more for you on Facebook. Oh, you went back to Ground Zero and, on Facebook. Uh, yeah, so find me, and I'm gonna plug back into the uh, social social media world. universe. You're still watching? That's amazing. Nobody does that. Nobody, but you did. That means you want more. Pick one of these clips. Go for it. I dare you. Hey, also follow one of those social media thingies.